those those employees to be there. You know, I think that was important as well. You know, they just lost a uh, just a gut wrenching, you know, uh, five game series where, you know, that team gave everything that they had, you know, how Phoenix did. and uh, Seattle had to play out of their minds the last six minutes to, you know, to get rid of Phoenix. And, and so, you know, I think the support both ways, you know, Diana recognizing them, but then also the organization being there upon their arrival. Uh, those are some of the more special moments that, you know, you, you kind of find out what your organization's about. Let's talk about two more players. One is I, I'm fascinated by uh, Della Don's free throw shooting, both su- success and technique. She seem, you know, she seems to be the rare player who takes her legs and excess motion out of shooting free throws and just almost shoots just with her wrist. Is that is that ideal? Is it just unique to her? What what would you say about that uh, that process? Well, it's unique to her for sure. Um, uh, it, it obviously, it's highly. Uh, highly successful, <laughs> you know, the, the mechanics of it. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, I, I think free throw shooting in general, in terms of form and routine, you know, might be one of the most unique things you find from player to player. Um, you know, she's found a way, I, I don't know the history of that. Um, you know, perhaps we'll see somebody do a story on that, you know, for the finals, you know, kind of where that came to be. We learned about Simone Augustus and her ball handling and where that came from. And, and how Seymour, her father, you know, what he did for her growing up. And I suspect there's something along the way in Elena's uh, uh, growth and, and, and skill development that, you know, something was formed long ago. Uh, but it's, uh, it's proved to be, you know, really valuable, number one, because she gets fouled a ton. Uh, she's not leaving many points out there. I think she's shooting about 93%, um, you know, and, 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 and made some big free throws, you know, to, to seal, you know, that, that W on the road. Uh, in Atlanta, tough environment. So, um, yeah, she's a special one. Sue Bird is the other player I wanted to talk about. Uh, just, you know, she's, she, I think she's the oldest player in the league and she is not playing like it. And, uh, she had plenty of energy when it came down to the fourth quarter. She, she had, she had the legs to hit uh, about some 25 footers that really wrapped up the game. Yeah. You know, and give Dan Hughes a, a lot of credit. Uh, you know, he's, he's really pushed a, uh, all the right buttons uh, with this team all season, you know, go back to their off season. And then, you know, as, as they carried it through, uh, you know, to, to uh, on the court and pushing all the right buttons his use of his bench, um, you know, the courage in a game five to continue to use your bench because it was Jordan Canada's minutes that allowed Sue to have her legs in the, in the closing six minutes of that series. Mm-hmm. And, and so why she was able to, I mean, what she ended up with 14 there. I mean, she hit, she hit, uh, however many threes, uh, but their, their offensive rating in the last six minutes was a 155, which was, which is just, wow. uh, otherworldly. Um, but, but that was because, you know, I mean, I mean, can you think about this for a second? How many coaches would go down the stretch and leave Jewel Lloyd on the bench and play Sammy Whitcomb, who's essentially a no name unless you live in Seattle. Mm-hmm. Uh, or maybe Australia where, 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 you know, she starred over there. Uh, it's a pretty gutsy thing to do, you know, because I think you maybe sometimes go, okay, you got me at this point now, Julie, you got to go finish it off. And, and so I think that storyline was, was really important and, and how well Sammy played, you know, in that moment, such a big, big moment. And, you know, it just, and then, uh, you know, Jordan Canada hit a big three when, when, uh, you know, they offered her that opportunity. They went under a screen. She hit a nice, you know, she was in transition, uh, you know, got an easy basket. So I mean, that's a team that's, they, they're really believing in themselves. It, it's, they're going to be a tough out. I know Washington's had a great season as well. Um, you know, but, but Seattle has something special about them. Their, their belief in what they're doing, you know, when it's their time, whether it's Jordan Canada, who's a rookie, you know, or Sammy Wickham, who, you know, isn't, isn't necessarily a household name, you know, having the courage to do what they're doing and, and the confidence uh it just speaks volume to i think to, to the job that dan hughes has done in seattle this summer i also remember mid-season when brunson was healthy uh seattle was playing great and they came to target center and you guys handled them fairly easily we did uh we do you know we we um you know we we like to match up with seattle you know, um, obviously we're not there, um, uh, but you know, we, we felt like if we were in the finals with Seattle, that it would be a hell of a series. And, you know, we have some strengths that match up well with them, but, um, you know, whether it's Sylvia on offense or defense, uh, but, but still played, I think Howard pretty well. Um, uh, you know, obviously we, we know her pretty well, but you know, the dominance that still would have on the inside, which she did, 
uh, in that game. And then, like, as you mentioned, having Brunson to uh, now, I mean, you know, Stewie's tough to tough to stop, especially in the, in the MVP season that she's had. But but we saw the last time they were here when we did not have Brunson uh, and we were playing smaller ball. ball. Um, we had the game tied and and, and uh, Brandon Stewart came out uh, out of a timeout and hit two straight threes on us. That you kind of go, if you have Brunson, you know, maybe that doesn't happen. But uh, at the end of the day, we didn't have Brunson and, and we didn't win that game. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I would say that we, we like that matchup, but uh, we, we just didn't get ourselves in there. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, let's do a few Twitter questions here real quickly. Uh, one from Beth. Uh, would love to hear about the division of labor between Lynx head coach and assistant coaches during practices and games. Who does what and why? Uh, for, for practice situations, you know, we, we, um, if, if you kind of, if we can construct the day, you know, we, we start out with, uh, a staff meeting that is generally about an hour and a half, um, meet daily, eight thirty to 10, uh, at 10 o'clock is, uh, the assistant coach heavy time. That's their skill development time. So they would, uh, from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock partake in 20 minute sessions, of different players working on different things. Uh, I'm not on the floor. I'm not even out there uh, in, in uh, you know, in, in the, uh, uh, where the basketball courts are. I'm, I stay back in the office and I let them have their time. Uh, I think that's really important. I want the assistant coach's voice to, you know, to be the strongest. I don't want them to see me. I don't want them to feel like, you know, pressure, whether the player feels pressure or, or the coaches feel any kind of pressure. I just want them to have their time. That's their relationship time. Uh, to work on things. And, and, uh, and then, you know, uh, then during the course of practice, uh, we have some, you know, division in terms of who uh, is the voice or who would initiate or run certain drills, full court drills, you know, has typically been Shelly where, you know, she, uh, she gets them organized and gets them into what we do. And then, the, you know, the next part, depending what we're doing, depending on what time of the season, um, you know, our, our defensive stuff, um, you know, it, it'll, it'll bounce back and forth whoever scout it is, you know, would have uh, a heavy, heavy responsibility with the practice guys. And so whoever scout it is will be on another court t- teaching the practice guys what we're going to be running. Uh, and so if you're not on in a scout, then you're, you're locked in more to what the links are doing. So, so they go back and forth. Um, and then post-practice, you know, there's, there's more skill development uh, for the assistant coaches. And, and, uh, and then I would, I would, uh, uh, do my favorite part of practice, which is the end of practice where I have to join the media to talk about all the great things we did that day. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you, you wouldn't exist without us, Cheryl, or That's something exactly. like that. There's yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the games are, you know, the games are um, a little different. Uh, you know, obviously, the, you know, your, your involvement, you know, changes. You're in a very confined area. Uh, but now, now it's about voices, voices of assistant coaches or, you know, collaboration, um, you know, and again, that begins when we arrive for the game, you know, everyone has something different they're doing on the court, uh, Shelly with our guard play, James with our post play, Walt uh, being involved in both. Uh, and there's still, we continue with the film watching, we're still pulling players aside, you know, so assistant coaches are very heavy into the, you know, the, the details of what we're doing, screening angles, hey, when you do this tonight, this is what's going to be available and really get the players locked in. I'm a big believer in focusing on tonight, these two, three things you have to focus on getting done. And, and that, that's their job to communicate those things. And, and then it's a collaboration throughout the game. You know, there, there is no, um, you know, no coach that is only assigned to offense or defense. It is at that point, I want to hear everything that everybody is seeing and, And that's where you get your suggestions and, um, you know, just, just, you know, whatever you're seeing and, and, you know, half times, obviously, you know, the voices, our video coordinator might have pulled some plays, points of emphasis that will, will get those fired up at halftime for the players. The halftime video is incredibly valuable. Um, You know, players are going through it. They know something happened, but they're not quite sure what great time for the video coordinator, Annie, uh, to, to be able to, to get that up for us and we can identify, you know, the fixes that need to take place. Or if you're doing something really well, make sure you keep doing it. Uh, from Ben W., what was your favorite moment of All-Star Weekend? My favorite moment of All-Star Weekend? Wow, that's a tough one. There were so many. Um, 
you know, I, I think, you know, as the, when I, when I think about being on the, in the bowl and, and being in my uh, spectator seat uh, where I was and uh, the, before the game, you know, the anticipation of the game, I always know how I feel as a coach when our, our fans have, have gathered and uh, we're getting ready to do intros and the energy that's in the building. And as, as our, our game ops folks kind of get it going and the, the show that is uh, kind of before the game tips and anticipation is something that always kind of gets me pretty amped up. And so I kind of felt that uh, I was excited for the all-stars because the, you know, the however many thousands of fans that we had there uh, were so engaged and so passionate, even though it was not the links uh, that they were about to introduce. And so I think I was just, I had that moment of feeling really, really proud as, as uh, the game was about to, about to uh, get underway. So I would say if I could package that into kind of one moment, uh, that that's what I would say would be my favorite. From Nathan Hansen, uh, well, wanted to ask about uh, the, the playoffs. I think we've probably already done that. Well, let's narrow it down to this. Has there been a favorite moment in the playoffs? Well, I think there's no question my favorite moment was uh, the, the, the Phoenix, um, you know, in the I think it was, was a game two, the overtime game was Tarasi hitting her second three to send the thing uh, into the overtime when uh, Phoenix ran exactly the same play that they had just run. And uh, Sue got a hard contest on Diana. Matter of fact, I think there were two people contesting Diana, and, and she drained the three anyway. I think that uh, that shot will stay in my mind for, for a long, long time. Just... Um, just, just incredible. You know, I mean, uh, there's, there's, you know, Tarasi, I have no problem saying that, uh, you know, she, she's the greatest shot maker, uh, in clutch situations, uh, in the history of, of, of our time. Wow. Uh, strong words and, and who can disagree, uh, from, from longtime listener MJ, who's come out to your shows and also, uh, listens to, I know to the hockey show and other shows around the talk North.com podcast network. What responsibility specifically do you have with USA basketball? I mean, we know your assistant coaches are one thing they want you to hone in on and, uh, and what should fans look for in the WNBA finals in terms of matchups, defenses, three point shooting, things like that. Well, as far as USAB, it's not unlike uh, the division of labor that I just described in that uh, the assistant coaches now we're, we're divvied up as far as countries uh, you know, we know our pool, you know, we, we've had, you know, some time together, you know, from, from 2014 through now in that, uh, myself, Dawn, Jen have all been a part of this. And so we've, we've kind of, you know, got our countries laid out. And so, um, you know, Lisa Boyer, who is on Dawn Staley's staff at, at, uh, South Carolina runs, uh, kind of the, you know, the scouting piece, making sure that, you know, hey, Cheryl, you've got Canada, you know, Jen, you've got Japan. This is when they're playing. There's some advanced scouting that goes on um, that Jen and I don't uh, or Dawn won't get to be a part of as this thing gets underway. But um, so it's, it's it's very similar. You know, I think there's the um, very much the USA basketball part where we're focused on ourselves in getting the the final roster set. You know, there's a lot of conversations around that. There's a lot of a lot of talk about what needs to happen in practice so we all have you know the voice in that and then um you know then then we leave that you know we we, we begin to really whether we're watching ourselves at practice but then assistant coaches get get pretty involved in you know the, the next scout that they would be focusing on preparing video gathering stats keeping an eye on what other other countries are doing where they're participating right now um you know for example we we, we play um uh, Canada, uh, Japan and Canada will play uh, tomorrow night. So, you know, Jen and I will be pretty locked in on that uh, as, as we get ready to play these teams. We want to be prepared. You know, I think that's always, you know, uh, an edge that you can have. And, you know, all teams do that. Uh, but that's that's pretty much what, what we're locked in on is as far as our staff. You know, the, the finals are going to be interesting. I, you know, I think, uh, like I said, I think through the years, I've, I've done this for 18 years, there's always a team that you go, that they just have something about them. And, you know, uh, there was, there was, you know, a time where Seattle, much like us in, in 2011, much like Minnesota in 2011, I don't think people really believed that we were for real, uh, until we kind of got three fourths of the way through and you go, oh, you know what, there's something special about them. 
And I think that was, you know, my feeling about Seattle. 